Hey everybody, yes I have been in the garage working away at things and I want to show you what I've been doing including where the uh, resin castings have been getting to. More on that in a minute. Oh. I did just now wonder if there was a fire in here because I could smell burning and then remembered I dried this desk off um, with a blowtorch because <laughs> it was wet from all the wet sanding of those resin things. But um, first I want to show you what clocks I have available at the moment and I'll do this as quickly as I can. Okay, keeping in mind the last clock I made was clock 56. Clock 46 is still here waiting for a home. Um, I really like this one, it's got a nice coloured back plate. It's got good colouring and stuff to it. I like it, but it hasn't found a home yet, but maybe it will now. Moving on, then we have clock 53, which is this painted clock. Um, show you close up. See, looks pretty cool. Uh, actually, shall I? All right, now it's dark enough in here. I've never shown you this about this clock, but one of the paints I use in it is actually UV reactive. So as you can see, it glows, it glows under UV light. So if you wanted to get a cheap black light and have it facing this, it would glow. Just something about it I've never actually told anyone, I realised. Personally, I think this was the best painted clock I've done so far, but again, hasn't found a home, but maybe it will now. The next clock is clock 55, which I'm going to have to do a different view on. This is the one that I made with Derek Sprocket. People ask, does it boing? Oh yeah, it boings around. In fact, it takes quite a while for it to stop boinging around. Um, let's try and... Okay, so from the bottom there's a big cog and I can't remember where I got that one from actually. Uh, this is a spring from the forks of a Blackbird 1100 that Lord Billius sent me. Um, and then there's Derek Sprocket, which has been wire-wheeled back to expose it with heat coloured and lacquered bolts, bolts, screws, mm, that's, a, that's questionable, bolts and screws, are, well, they're not what you think they are, but anyway, um, they look pretty cool, and then the hand brushed aluminium and lacquered face. It's a little bit more expensive than my normal stand clocks, but not by much, um, it's from Derek, so it's, you know, it's, it's very unique. I am going to chuck in to sweeten the deal one of my Spicy 110 uh, fabric key tags. You know, the one that was on Divi's key. Um, just to sweeten the deal because I've got one set around. So if you want it and you buy it, I'll send that to you as well. So that was clock 55. Clock 56 is one that I finished today. And this has the most complicated shape uh, of backplate that I've ever produced. <laughs> and the reason for that is so it looks right from the front. Close up, you can see it's got like that rain effect pattern that I like to do. It just makes it much more interesting when it's sprayed. Uh, and also it accentuates the pattern of the disc. If I'd done brushed aluminium, obviously it would have looked like silver on silver and the pattern would have been lost. But this way it contrasts. You've got these are still all filled in, but the holes are all empty. Um, yeah. I like it. It's going to be on the store by the time you see this video. I've also got the same disc but a smaller one that I'll be producing soon. Uh, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. That'll actually be the next one I'm gonna do. Okay, so they are all the clocks I have available at the moment. I'm very slow in producing them um, because of my back problems. I can't do nearly as much work as I was doing before, but I'm, I'm getting through there. The, the Derek clock was a little bit of a struggle. There was a lot of pain involved in that one, but yeah, it'll be all right. So let's talk about the resin casting. Where was I last time with this? Um, I was having shrinkage issues due to excess heat, we thought. I tried doing another round of castings using less hardener, and um, these are them. I basically, yeah, I wasn't happy with them, uh, and I was seeing if I could recover the ball bearings out of them, and it looks like I probably can get quite a lot of them out this, to say, because when I talk about these resin castings, you've got to treat them like they're glass. Because a good crack with a hammer, and they do crack. Um, so remember, yeah, to treat them like they're glass. They're not plastic that's going to take an absolute beating. So yeah, that's what happened to the ones that I tried to do with less hardener. Um, I don't actually think that was the issue now. Uh, 
let me show you what I've done and I'll explain what I'm going to do next and, and some things that have changed my mind about this. Okay, so some of these are basically perfect and I'm going to keep them. Uh, some of them are not perfect and I'm actually going to give them away with clock orders. Uh, if I get a clock, I'll just chuck one of these in with it. Uh, that's these three. Uh, I'll, get, I'll show you close up in a minute. Uh, and these ones I'm still working out whether they're about to get smacked with a hammer as well. Uh, but these ones, these ones have worked out well. So let's zoom in and show you. Although I get a feeling this aluminium is going to ruin it a little bit. Let's get this out of the way. Ooh. Okay, so let's start with let's start with the three that I'm going to be chucking in the clock orders as a little bonus um, randomly. Although if you order one and you say, hey, I really like that one, if I've got it still, I'll, I'll give you the one you asked for. Um, there is three, basically, but you'll see them. So this one is not perfect. It's, it, these marks aren't as obvious as they seem, but that's actually glass that's been polished. Because this is filled with beach glass that I found on Hailing when me and Reno were going for a walk. I clicked at it, and uh, this was a test piece that actually polished up quite nicely. And uh, although I'm not willing to sell it because it's not quite perfect, it's definitely something that's nice and... You might like it. There's a little added bonus for the clock order. The next one is almost empty. This was a test casting from the very first tries, and this is one of the best ones. A uh, sort of clarity of um, how little work had to be done to it. So now I think I understand where I was going wrong. I actually think it needed more hardener and just a little bit more stirring. But I'll get on to that. Uh, but as you can see, that's pretty cool. There's just a single layer of ball bearings in it. It was just a test piece. Though on the top, You'll note that those ball bearings are actually slightly sticking out when they've been flattened off and polished in the sanding process. So as I say, that's another one that I'll, I'll give with a clock order. It's basically the same thing, although this one's properly recessed into it. A single layer of ball bearings in a nice little one. And, and there's, well, there's nothing really wrong with that one. The only reason I'm not selling it is because it seems a bit plain and there's a couple of gaps. But it's a nice little thing. This one, I'm not selling or giving away or anything like that. This is, can you just make out there is a marble in there? That is a marble I found on the beach, which was near some glass, which was quite obviously one of those old lemonade bottles with the um, the, ball, uh, the marble in the neck. And uh, I cast that into resin just as a thing. It's probably over 100 years old, that marble. Anyway, now on to the ones I am going to, well, I'm still working on. These two, the reason I'm still working on them, they came out of the batch that got destroyed um, and because they had so little hardener in them I'm finding there's some places it hasn't properly cured yet and a few air bubble marks. See, everything's perfect on this and then there's that patch down there that's gone a bit soft and shiny. That's where it's not cured properly. I have tried heating it. I'm going to keep heating them uh, every now and then with the with a hairdryer and leave them for a couple more days and just keep doing that and see if that finally gets that last bit of resin cure. Otherwise, yeah, that one and that one will be uh, getting hit with a hammer. Okay, so before I move on to the ones that are perfect, because some of them turn out right, I was going to just give up on this resin, this um, polyester resin, and just be like, no, do you know what, it's such a pain in the butt. Uh, I'm going to try epoxy instead. Well... I've had a chat with some resin companies and yeah, I can get epoxy, not at the moment, it's all, everyone's out of stock of it for the next couple of weeks at least. Um, and it inherently has some unique problems, so I don't know if it's going to be the solution. So that's when I buy that, I'm going to buy a small amount of it, I'm going to try some more test pieces and see how they go. But I feel like they've really progressed, like I've done three castings and I feel like these last ones are the ones out of the, the very last set, um, actually one's out of the earlier set, but actually two of them out of the earlier set, but these I like, I want them to be, and I'm like, well, this is really good, maybe it's just I need to learn, so I've just about run out of uh, polyester resin, this stuff is available on um, Amazon, not hugely expensive, I'm going to get another one, and I'm going to try, I'm going to keep trying uh, and try and nail this. I've spoken to some companies that supply ammunition and I think I can get some bulk orders. But that's a question I'd like to ask you. What calibres of bullets would you want to see in a clear resin casting? I'll show you one I've done in a minute with 9mm. 
the, the, the ones that are going to make it the cheapest, because obviously you're not going to want these to be super expensive, but they're not going to be completely cheap because you have to pay for what's in them and the time and everything. So I can do 9 mils, uh, that's not a problem. I'm pretty sure I can do 45 ACP, possibly 44 Magnum, um, depends on the prices of that one. Although there would be less bullets in it, so it wouldn't be quite so many. Um, I'd love to do some 50 AE, what the Desert Eagle uses, but the only one place I know I can get that, the guys, I actually need to email him and have a chat with him, see if he can do anything with me, sort of, as his store's closed at the moment. But enough waffling, let's show you the ones that are actually good. Okay, so there's four that I'm very happy with. This was just a test piece um, with bullets in it, 9mm, to see how it'd come out. And as you can see, it's come out really nicely. But equally, I did this in two ways so I could test two things at once. I overfilled it so I could try a clear top and see how well it polished up. And as you can see, it polished up great. But I also made sure that they stuck out a bit. So when I sanded the base, I'd sand through the bullets themselves. And they look awesome. I, I, you're not really supposed to have it so it sticks out like this, but it's really cool. The way that the brass polishes up, and you can see, like, well, this one, you can see the projectile and the case as it's gone through it. And there's, uh, there's nothing on that side. Yeah, there's a bit of a casing on that side. A tip there, and those tips there. But yeah, that's that's come out really nicely. I say like, it was just a test piece, but I've shown people pictures of this, and they're like, that is seriously cool. I love it. I'm like, right, fine, I'll sell it. And I'll do more like it. They will be like this. Obviously, if I'm doing, um, I might, I don't know how to arrange them. I could do them neatly or I could just stack them randomly like this. If I do it randomly, they all look unique. I suppose that's a benefit. Uh, there's a scratch on the top of this one, so I'm going to have to sand the top of this back just down a layer and repolish it. Uh, oh, I'll do that before you see this video. Um, otherwise, that one's great. Then. This one is just ball bearings cast in the resin, but this has come out with no flaws in it, as far as I can see. Uh, some of the balls just stick out slightly. Can I show you that? So you get these little um, little pockets of shine where they've come through. But yeah, that turned out quite nicely, so I'll be selling that one too. Same sort of deal, but this one's got nuts in it. 10 mils, because you know, it's the classic 10 mils. Are they 10 mils? I think eights. Probably M8 actually, probably not M10. But anyway, yeah, that's another one that came out nicely. And you can see when it comes out right, it works. And then probably the best one, because it's so different, is this one, which is a pyramid. Uh, there is a few air bubbles just at the bottom, but you can't really see that when it's on the side. But what you can see is you see how it reflects the underside of the ball bearings. There's small ones, medium ones, and large ones. Now it's completely clear on the base there, but as you can see it gets this mirrored effect, so as you look at it, it looks like that. Equally, as you can see the ball bearings stick out all the way, different on different surfaces, but they're all flat and feel polished. Um, yeah, I really love that one, it looks quite cool. Let me show you a little bit of video close up. Okay, so here's the one with the bullets, say 9mm. I'm going to have to repolish that top surface, I forget that about right, but yeah, you can see the cases are flat, and there's a bit of a flat spot on that side. Uh, the ball bearing one, as you can see, very simple, pretty. The nut, the nut one, it's pretty cool, and the pyramid, which yeah, you can really see now how some of those ball bearings have been sanded through. That's hand sanded through chrome steel. You can imagine how much effort goes into these. Obviously this one would be very fragile at the top. If you drop this, it could damage it. So treat it like it's glass, but it is all very smooth. And that one ball on the top just sits perfectly. And then it's got that really cool effect of reflecting the base. So yeah, as I say, these four are gonna be up for sale when this video goes up. These I'm going to include randomly in the next uh, clock orders I get. Um, if you want a specific one, I mean, it's going to be easy. I know that the big, the big flat 
the big ball bearing one, the small ball bearing one, or the beach glass one. If you just say on the order which one you'd like with a clock order, um, I'll send them to you because I say they're not good enough to send, but they're quite pretty still, and people might appreciate them. And then these two, well, I've got to see how the, uh, the, the continued curing with those goes. But yeah, I'm going to persevere with this uh, polyester because I was like, hang on, I've done one... I've used a kilo, I think it is, of this stuff, and I've gone from having severe problems to workable problems to ones I can actually sell. If I've done that in the space of one bottle, when I've never done any of this before, I'm like, come on. It's not actually that bad progression. You need to do a couple of bottles of this stuff, multiple ones of these, to make the mistakes, to make the mistakes to understand uh, what does and doesn't work. That's all part of the learning process. Oh yeah, and of course my little uh, marble, which I'm going to keep. You can also you can see the uh, the marble in it way easier now. Oh, and the only other thing is on my store, I currently have quite a few of the distressed-looking keychains, the ones that uh, before they were black and gold, and I've I've wire-wheeled these to uh, look more silvery metal-coloured. Uh, these are completely free-moving because they're uh, not O-ring chains. So that's basically what I've been up to recently. It's been a slow process because of the amount of time that I'm just a little bit incapable of working in here because of my back. But I'm finding ways to cope with it. Although I know when I stand up after filming this video, I'm probably going to scream. Because <laughs> you just get these massive shooting pains down your leg and cramp and... Oh. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to order some epoxy. I'm going to practice with that. Maybe I'll make some videos doing that, comparing the two. I'm going to get some more clear cast resin uh, and do some more that way. So hopefully from the funds raised from selling these, it'll help me continue learning so I could then maybe produce them more easily. Uh, maybe more of them. Because I think these, are, these appeal more uh, universally between people. Do note the bullet ones I can only send inside the UK. No outside the UK orders possible. I don't have an export license. Even though they're inert, I cannot do that. Never going to happen. Uh, and continue making clocks. That's why I've got another sheet of aluminium here I had to go and get. So obviously if you buy anything from my store, it helps support my channel. It helps support me, especially through this pretty difficult time in my bag. Um, Certainly not a time I could go and get a job if I wanted to, but I'm going to keep prevailing with this. Um, thank you for the support through PayPal and stuff. It's, it's allowing me to buy more resin and, and things and learn because, as I say, I do think this has a much better chance than the clocks. I mean, the clocks, I get it, they're not very cheap, but they're a ton of work and they're very, you know, they're slightly up, I'm not going to say upmarket, but, you know, it's, it's definitely a luxury item. These can be a little bit cheaper, perfect presents for people. Um, and more in the realms of the gift price, should we say. So, thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this interesting. Um, as I say, I'm going to get some epoxy and maybe I'll do some videos with Clearcast Resin versus Epoxy because like, there is lots of videos out there, but I don't like the way they've been done. They don't get to the point. They don't get to the things you need to know and they don't explain why things are the way they are. If you understand why things happen, then you understand how to avoid them and how to overcome them. If you're just told how, to, how the solution is done, you're just a part fitter, if you know what I mean, rather than a mechanic. Well, I'm going to stop waffling now. Bye-bye. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please check out the links in the description and all the different ways you can help support the channel. Any help is greatly appreciated.